Hello, and welcome to episode 6 of Burns Banter, the podcast that takes a fresh look at the life and works of Robert Burns, hosted by myself, Alistair Turnbull. In this episode, I'm going to look at a poem called To William Stewart. But this is actually a poem all about a hangover, a really bad hangover. I, I'm going to ask a couple of questions about the poem, the first one being, uh, who is William Stewart? I, I'll answer a couple of other questions, such as where, where did he write it, when did he write it, even why did he write it? Then I'm going to read the poem to you, then I'll read a modern translation and finish off with a few more facts about the story. So let's get into it. Let's ask the questions. Okay, question number one. Who was William Stewart? Well, William Stewart was actually a very good friend of Robert Burns. Uh, he was a factor in a, an estate at Closeburn. A factor meant that he ran the business of the estate for the estate owner. So William Stewart was a learned man. He was an honest man. Uh, he liked a good drink. He liked some of Burns's more a uh, body verses. You know the more rude verses. Uh, they were very good friends. They spent a lot of time together. Uh, when Robert was working as an excise man on his duties, he would often uh, drop in and see William Stewart. He's actually written a few other things about William Stewart as well. He wrote a song called You're Welcome, Willie Stewart, which is a great song. He also wrote a song, a, a lovely Peggy Stewart. Uh, that was uh, William Stewart's daughter. He, he wrote it as a favour to William for his daughter. This poem to William Stewart... It was actually written in a place called the Brown Hill Inn. Now, the Brown Hill Inn was an inn about seven miles north of Ellisland Farm, which is where Robert was living and working at the time. And Robert considered the Brown Hill Inn as his local. He went there quite often. He knew a lot of people there. And uh, it didn't just inspire him to write uh, the poem to William Stewart. He was inspired to write a lot more poetry and songs from people and instances that happened at the Brown Hill Inn. Uh, a couple of examples of this is uh, uh, one night he was uh, drinking heavily with a guy called John Bacon. Uh, John Bacon is actually the landlord of the Brown Hill Inn. When uh, his wife, Catherine, who's actually the sister of William Stewart, uh, Catherine said to John and to Robert, you're not getting any more drink. You've had far too much drink. That's enough. And Burns got really upset and wrote a scathing poem called The Hen-Pecked Husband. I'm not going to recite it because it's not very uh, nice to uh, Catherine. Uh, one other example of uh, a song that he was inspired to write uh, by meeting someone at the Brown Hill Inn was, uh, was actually in 1793, when he was having a meal with a guy called Dr. Purdy of Sankar and another friend, they met an old and weary soldier. And the old soldier uh, told them of uh, his travels during the war and the hardship and how he came home and uh, tried to meet with his sweetheart and stuff. And Robert was really inspired by this guy's uh, tale and he wrote a, a song called the Soldier's Return, which is quite a famous song now. In fact, I'll read the first uh, verse of the song to you just now. It goes, uh, When wild war... Uh, give me a second. I need to put my glasses on. When wild war's deadly blast was blown, and gentle peace returning, when money a sweet babe fatherless, and money a widow mourning, I left the lines and tented field where Lang had been a lodger, my humble knapsack, all my wealth, a poor and honest soldier. That was after meeting a soldier in the pub, he wrote that. And there was there's more verses as well. It's a very good song, you should look it up. Uh, anyway, back to the original poem we're talking about, which is called To William Stewart, and it's all about a hangover. Why is the poem called To William Stewart? Well, basically, the story is... Robert spent a night in the pub, it was a Sunday night, and he got absolutely drunk. Really too drunk, so he couldn't make it home, he stayed overnight. And in the morning, he's sitting, uh, feeling very ill and very sorry for himself, 
with a really bad hangover. Now, normally, uh, in today's uh, world, if you had a really good night out the night before, you maybe text your pals the next day and say, oh, we did this and we did that, and this is what happened. Well, there's no phones back then, so Robert sits by the fireside and writes a poem all about the hangover and sends it to his friend, William Stewart, which is basically what happened. He had a hangover, he sat there, he wrote down his thoughts, he sent it to his friend. It was never meant to be published, it was just a bit of fun between two men, that was all. But it is a really good account of a hangover. I, and with that, I think we're going to read the original poem. So let's do that. Let's read the original poem a, to William Stewart. Okay, let's read the poem a, to William Stewart, written by Robert Burns in 1789. Uh, I'm going to tell you the first line and explain it before we go because it will really throw you off. The first line is, In Honest Bacon's ingle nuke, here mon I sit and think. Now, Honest Bacon refers to John Bacon, the owner and the landlord of the Brown Hill Inn, and an ingle nuke is a fireside. So basically, Burns is sitting by the fireside in the Brown Hill Inn, nursing a hangover. Here we go with the poem. In honest bacon's ingle nuke, here morn I sit and think. Sick o' the world and the world's folk, and sick, damn sick o' drink. I see, I see there is nae help, but still down I mourn sink. Till some day lay enough I yelp, we worth that cursed drink. Yes, therein, alas, I was so foo, I could but yisk and wink. And now this dare, this day, sair, sair I rue, the weary, weary drink. Satan, I fear thy sooty claws, I hate thy brunstain stink, and I, I curse the luckless cause, the wicked soup o' drink. In vain I would forget my woes, in idle rhyming clink, for past redemptions damned in prose, I can do naught but drink. For you, my well, for you, my trusty, well-tried friend, may heaven still on you blink, and may your life flow to the end, sweet as a dry man's drink. Some hangover. A lot of old words here, uh, which is why I've written a... Uh, a modern translation in my book, Robert Burns, Food and Drink, I, which is what I'm reading from just now. I, so let's go with the modern translation and see if you understand a bit more about what's being said. In honest bacon's fireside, here must I sit and think. Sick of the world and the world's people, and sick, damn sick o' drink. I see... I see there is no help, but still down I must sink, till some day, low enough I cry, alas, the cursed drink. Last night, alas, I was so drunk, I could but hiccup and wink, and now this day, sore, sore I regret, the weary, weary drink. Satan, I fear your sooty claws, I hate your brimstain stink, and always I curse the luckless cause, the wicked soup o' drink. In vain I would forget my woes in idle rhyming jingle, for past redemptions damned in prose, I can do nothing but drink. To you, my trusty well-tried friend, May heaven still on you smile, and may your life flow to the end, sweet as a dry man's drink. So there you are. Burns sitting by the fireside on a Monday morning after a heavy night, suffering a hangover. Well, there's not much more I can say about this, apart from the Brown Hill Inn a, actually closed down about 1850. I, it's not really there anymore. 
It's now a private house. Uh, the stables, which were across the road from the Brown Hill Inn, were sold years and years ago to a farmer and became farm buildings. So the buildings are still there, but it's no longer a pub. Uh, also, uh, other famous people stayed there. Uh, Wordsworth stayed there on his tour of Scotland with his sister. Uh, she actually wrote down in her diary. She didn't really like the place. Uh, she said it was uh, covered in dirt and grime. But there you go. Maybe it was on its way out by the time they went there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this poem. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And I especially hope to see you on the next episode. But until then... Slanjava.